What is going on everybody? Welcome back for week three of the Terraform for everyone, Terraform for all course. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be running down Terraform Cloud. So if you're not familiar with Terraform Cloud, as you can see, Terraform or HashiCorp does claim that it is the easiest way to use Terraform in production at any scale. And I think really what they're referring to with that is number one, it's UI based. So you could use the CLI and you could use the UI, which is awesome. Number two, it allows you to control your TF state inside of Terraform Cloud. So remember how we were talking about with the back end and all that stuff with like storing a TF state in S3, for example? Well, with Terraform Cloud, you don't have to do that. So if you don't already have a Terraform Cloud account, what you could do is you can click on create account and then you can go ahead and you can sign up with a username, email and password. For me, I actually already have an account. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit sign in and then I'm going to sign in with my credentials here. And then my username is the NJ DevOps guy. So I'm going to hit sign in. So as you can see, I have a few different organizations. I'm going to choose my Terraform Cloud MJL because that's a brand new one. And the first thing that it's going to want us to do is create a new workspace. So let's go ahead and create a new workspace. Now this workspace is essentially going to be the collection of where our module is. So what module will we be using? What code will we be using? Well, I have inside of my admin turn DevOps repo, I have a resource group creation. So essentially what this is doing is this is just creating a resource group inside of Azure. Now, if you don't have Azure, it's okay. You could do the same thing with like an S3 bucket, for example, in AWS. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my workflow, either API driven, CLI driven, or version control, which is essentially it stores your Terraform configuration in Git repo, and the trigger is based on pull requests and merges. So this is kind of like that um, GitOpsy style, like continuous deployment style way where you know anything that if there's a pull request or merge like it's going to automatically kick off my workflow so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to choose the version control one now the next thing is to connect to where our version control provider is so in this case i'm going to be using github and go ahead and i'm going to choose github and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to choose authorize terraform cloud So then at this point, I can go ahead and I can choose a repo that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose my cloud dev resource group. Okay. I can give it a description if I want to, and then I can go ahead and I can choose advanced options. So this will essentially say the directory that Terraform will execute within the default to the root of your repository. So what that essentially means is it's going to default here to kick off my code. If my code was say in a separate module, I would go ahead and just specify that directory. Okay, I can set up some automatic run triggering if I want to, so it always triggers the run. VCS branching, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose to create the workspace. Okay, so as we can see, the workspace has been created. Now let me just go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. We can see that I'm running on version 1.0.9 of Terraform. I have an overview here, and what's really cool about this is here's where I can configure my variables. Now, I'm gonna go into that in just a second, but I just wanna show a few other things. So runs, that's gonna show the successful and the failed runs for the creation. Any states that are available, so our TF states, the variables, of course, and then any settings, general locking notification, SSH keys that may be needed, like if you're running Terraform against, you know, maybe a virtual machine or something, version control, and then destruction and deletion. So as we can see here, the variables, as we know, were all used for our plans and applies, for our modules, for our Terraform code. And then under here, you can see these Terraform variables are set using a Terraform.tfrs file. So it's interesting. Remember how we were talking about that Terraform.tfrs file where it you know, runs your parameters or your variables at runtime? That's exactly what this is doing here. So, so let's go ahead and set some Terraform variables. So for example, add variable. So if I go back to my code here, we can see that I have a few different variables that I need to set. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose, for example, rg name, which is one of my variables here. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a value. I'm gonna say test Terraform Cloud. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit save. So now that variable is saved. Now the next thing that I wanna show is, now I have a few other variables here of course, but I do wanna show like subscription ID for example. So let's go ahead and choose subscription ID. Now at this point, I may not want this to be public. So what could I do for that? Well, what I could do is I can hide the data via choosing sensitive. So what I can do is I can just choose sensitive here and then I'm gonna put in my value. Okay, so at first it actually comes up as plain text, but once I save it, you can now see the difference here. So RG name, you can see it's in plain text, but then my subscription ID, which is a sensitive value, it just has sensitive write only. So effectively, I can go ahead and I can edit RG name, for example, but if I go ahead and I try to edit right here, it shows that you know there's no value because it's write only. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop in my value again, just in case, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in my other variables. Okay, and as we can see, I've added in location, client ID, client secret, and tenant ID. Those are my RBAC policies that allow me to authenticate to Azure. So now what I can do is I can click on runs and we'll go ahead and start new plan. So if your configuration doesn't require variables, you can start your first plan now. We already added in our variables here, so we're good to go from that sense, and we'll go ahead and we'll start our new Terraform plan. And as you can see, this is now running. And just like on the terminal, it's gonna run a Terraform plan and then a Terraform apply. Now at this point, we have to confirm and apply. So we can go ahead and we can click confirm here, confirm plan, and now it's officially running the apply. And as we can see, everything was successful. Our resource group was created. Now, if I go into states here, you'll see that I now have my TF state right here. We can see the subscription that was created. We can see the Terraform or the test Terraform cloud resource group that was created. And now our TF state is stored right here. So anytime that anybody wants to make some changes to this code, what they could do now is they can log into Terraform Cloud, and then they can rerun the plan and apply just like you would on the terminal. So with that, that's a brief overview of Terraform Cloud. I do highly recommend jumping in here and playing with it. It is free for personal use, so you don't have to worry about putting in a credit card or anything. With that, thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it, and we'll see you next week.